What's up, everyone? Mark Lobiner, CEO, MTS Nutrition, Chief Marketing Officer, TigerFitness.com, creator of the Outright Bar, partner in the Ambrosia Collective, Pump Chaser Supplements, and 015 Nutrition, as well as IFBB Pro. Speaking of IFBB Pro, um, you know, I really thought I've done enough videos. I think I've done probably five or six videos on bodybuilders' health and the heart problems and what I think is causing them to pass away. But as I go through my YouTube comments and as I go through all them, I have a lot of people asking, what are your thoughts on what's going on? Bodybuilders dying. What do you think's causing it? And also Seth Ferrosi did a rant um, in his car about bodybuilders and the health problems and the risks they take. Now, first of all, Seth, I'm not going to play his video. I don't want to steal his content or anything. Seth basically said that bodybuilders are indeed taking years off their life. But they know what they're doing, and the sport will never change because we know we're doing it. We're adults, and we're taking those risks. But we are 100% taking years off our lives. I will agree for the most part, we don't know 100%. That's what's going to be someone's... Um, morbidity, so to speak. That's going to be what causes someone's death. But we do know that taking gobs and gobs of steroids and other drugs that create or cause an environment conducive to muscle growth, we know that insulin, we know that HGH, well, HGH and steroids, and excuse me, taken in excess. I did just do a video on how HRT is and can be healthy if done as a replacement therapy then, you know, he's right. You know, at the end of the day, taking all this stuff isn't healthy. There's a lot of people who take all this stuff and live just fine and don't have side effects, but there's a lot of smokers who seem to be healthy. And there's a lot of smokers like George Burns who live well into their 90s. At the end of the day, it's not very healthy. But then you go to the other polar extreme, um, which is Cali Muscle saying that bodybuilders are dying, so bodybuilding needs to be stopped completely, and everybody should stop competing. Look, man, it went from Cali claiming for years and years and years that he's natural, that he's natural, that he eats ramen and tuna and this hyphy mud mixture um, of, what was it, coffee grinds and cola? to and lifting heavy weights and this prison workout and all this stuff right to oh you know i just had a heart attack i just did a little bit of steroids i didn't do as much steroids as everybody and so then he has all of a sudden he does this other video we need to end bodybuilding and then he alludes to hgh insulin steroids and all this other stuff look man i'm a cali fan i think he's i think he's fun to watch i think he's charismatic but, you know, I've collaborated with the guy and I never, people ask me after I collaborated with, is he natural or not? I didn't, I don't care. But dude, this dude like stayed vascular, huge, like dude was way bigger than me, right? And like veins popping out everywhere, lifting crazy weight. Like, uh, I'm not, look man, I get accused of doing a lot of shit, but like, it's not hard for me to believe that he was doing enough shit year round at super duper duper high doses where him saying, okay, <laughs> so <laughs> it's almost too stupid. Like the shit he said is almost too stupid to talk about what he need to. It went from doing what I would guess if I was a guessing man is uber super duper beyond Mr. Olympia caliber doses of steroids year round because he didn't compete that much. He literally was just always jacked on YouTube, always jacked to saying that protein powder and creatine are bad for you. All right. Mm -hmm. That's like getting hit by a bus and saying that drinking water is bad for you. Like, Whatever, that's besides the point. The fact of the matter is, why do I think bodybuilders are dying? We've seen what Callie said. Um, you can watch the video. I mean, <laughs> it's tough. It's funny as shit. Seth Ferrosi, love him. He's a good friend. I'd watch his video. Um, why are bodybuilders dying? I think Nick Trigilli did a great job of stating this. Bodybuilders are dying because... 
they're dying. It's just, it's, it's that period of time. And Nick Trigilli bought this, brought this up. We had an upper respiratory tract um, infectious kind of um, pandemic going around. Um, you combine, you know, that, you know, the, um, the pandemic, the disease from the pandemic that I don't want to say, you combine that with bodybuilders living bodybuilder lifestyles Man, it's like throwing a newspaper on a forest fire, man. It's just going to catch. It's just going to add to the fire. So it's it's just not a good situation. So you have that. Whether it be from getting the actual sickness or whether it is from getting the shot from the sickness, either way, you got those spike proteins. And you have bodybuilders who have compromised hearts, overweight bodybuilders, 250 to 300 whatever pounds, and a lot of these bodybuilders, you know, they're they're in comorbidities that are just huge. Number one, they're overweight. Number two, they're aging black men. And if you look at the rates of heart disease, of diabetes, of just the average age of death is in the early 60s for black males. Um, like, you know, like you have Cedric and Sean and George. You throw on potentially the shot or the actual virus itself. I mean, that's the one variable. We have to mention it, right? We have to mention the fact that during the last two years, we've literally had a novel virus floating around. Did that cause their deaths? Oh, did it help them not die? No, it, it, it provided more stress for their body. Look, there's going to be years when no bodybuilders die that we know of. There's going to be years when four of them but I think Trigilli, I'm going to go back to Trigilli. He put it best. Like if these were NPC guys that no one ever heard of, which happens all the time. I've heard of local guys dying of insulin overdoses, of diuretic overdoses, or people just getting sick during prep and dying. I've been hearing about that since the early 2000s, since I started in this fucking sport. So you have that, but... The problem is this year, some really high profile people died or this past, not calendar year, but the last year time span from John Meadows to George, to Cedric, to Sean, it just looks bad. So the question is, what should the IFBB do about it? Nothing, nothing. They're literally just holding contests. It's not their job to provide insurance. This is different. Well, they do in major league baseball, different. A lot of these guys, the NPC guys, they're paying to compete, right? They're working up the ladder. IFBB, if they were to provide insurance or any of that stuff, you'd have to guarantee shows. So many people have pro cards and don't even use them. You're telling me that the IFBB shouldn't provide some kind of insurance for me when I compete once every three years or never use my pro card? Come on, that's ridiculous. At the end of the day, it's like joining a race. It's like signing up for your local 5K. Now, when you're a pro, it's different. When you're a pro, you email them, they send you a contract and you do the show. When you're an amateur, you go on the website, you sign, you pay, and you're in. There's nothing they should do about it. We're adults. We take our own risk. The IFBB is not forcing people to compete. They're not forcing people to take drugs. I've known multiple people who have turned pro naturally, okay? So at the end of the day, we're looking at all this stuff. You got Seth Ferrosi saying a, a lot of what I think, like bodybuilding is crazy. And just like any sport, like when you're done playing NFL football, you're probably not going to want to run around at 350 pounds um, and run into walls and run into things. No, when you're done playing football, when you're a lineman, you downsize and you stop hitting things with your head. That's what you do. So when you're done bodybuilding as a sport or a profession, you simply stop doing bodybuilding shit. That doesn't mean you can't go to the gym and train. That doesn't mean you can't do cardio. That doesn't mean you can't eat chicken and rice. That means you probably shouldn't do a gram of fucking gear a day. That means you should probably cut down a TRT dose. Look, there's risk inherent in everything in life. I do not think bodybuilding should change at all. Same reason the X Games has motherfuckers doing fucking flips and shit in the air on skateboards, going downhill on a skateboard at an angle like this. 
is because it's an extreme sport. Bodybuilding is an extreme sport. If you don't like bodybuilding the extreme sport, go compete in natural bodybuilding. You got the OCB, the NGA, the, the ANBF. You got all these great natural organizations that would love to have you on their stage and would love to take your money. I don't want to support these guys. Again, you're watching them. Nick Walker weighs about 700 pounds of lean mass right now. He's getting more followers by the day. His following is growing like this. Big Rami, his name is literally Big. They've literally nicknamed him Big. He's so big. Nobody calls me Big Mark. They call me Coach Mark. No one calls me Big Mark. You know why? Because I'm not big. Big Rami is fucking big. Guess who's winning the Olympia? Guess who has a huge following on social media? Big Rami. <laughs> Then you got your anomalies. You know, you got your Bumsteads. He's the biggest personality of all, but that's the thing. Bumstead's a personality. His body is a byproduct. It's just a side, it's just a, it's just fries. Like his personality is the burger. His body is just the fries. Like people are ordering the burger, but they're getting the fries with it. The fact that he looks amazing, the, the, the reason he makes money is because he's amazing. He's charismatic. So I'm not going to go and diss Cali and say that, look, man, at the end of the day, this is who they are. Like, would any of us know who Cali Muscle is without him being a bodybuilder? Maybe. He's a charismatic, fucking amazingly entertaining guy. Like, most of his videos lately are been him buying cars. And somehow he makes that fucking interesting, right? Like, but at the end of the day, we know who he is and we're talking about him because he was 250 or whatever pounds shredded with fucking vascularity that makes my vascularity, which is kind of my calling card, look like I'm flat as fuck, okay? Seth Ferrosi is where he's at with his opportunities because he's fucking huge and awesome looking. Big Rami's Big Rami because he's fucking big. Nick Walker, what the fuck's even going on there? Like, what, what fucking planet did this guy come from, right? <laughs> bodybuilding ain't going anywhere. And anybody who says bodybuilding should stop, look, man, maybe Callie's just mad because he did all those drugs and he never got a pro card. I, I was kind of bitter when I, I was like, man, I wish I had one. They're pretty cool to have. But then you have something really shitty happen. You have a heart attack. That sucks. So you're bitter. And now you're telling people not to compete. Calling out Phil and Kai saying, Phil and Kai, you need to educate your watchers on. No, Phil and Kai don't owe anyone shit. Phil's healthy as fuck. Kai Green literally does two hours of cardio before he even starts lifting. These guys have mitigated a lot of their health issues. I have a video with, Ka with Kai talking about keeping healthy why you do cardio from like five years ago. Phil Heath, look at him now. Skin looks healthy. But he's always looked pretty fucking healthy, you know? Like they don't know anybody anything. Nobody getting into bodybuilding thinks that drugs are healthy. Nobody getting into bodybuilding thinks that steroids aren't a risk that might affect your overall years on this planet. Nobody fucking believes that. At the end of the day, it's a fucking grift, okay? First, it's like, I'm a big muscle man. How many videos do I see? Muscle man plays video games. Muscle man eats at KFC. Muscle man does this. You're literally identifying as a fucking muscle man, okay? And then what happens is that grift is over. So then you have a health issue, which God bless the fact that everybody's okay who we're talking about here, right? And then you're like, oh, my new grift is anti-bodybuilding. Honestly, I'm afraid that a lot of these people are just doing things to stay relevant on social media. That kind of sucks. Because at the end of the day, we need to tell people the risks. I've been telling people the risks of black market steroids and overdoing things for years. I didn't just do it because it was hot to do, because people were dying and I'm riding the grift. I did it because these people need to know that before getting into something deep, what the risks and rewards are. Bottom line is, unless you're in the top three, maybe top five, there's no money in bodybuilding. You get your Cinderella stories, you get your Chris Bumstead, who's the perfect mix of the perfect body and the perfect personality, or you get your Bob Chickarillo, 
who literally had a pretty bad physique. I mean, in the grand scheme of great physiques, he had a phenomenal physique, but you know, he wasn't Mr. Olympia caliber, right? One of the most well-known, he's the voice of bodybuilding now. You get those anomalies, but you could be winning pro shows and be without a contract with a sponsor and be without any of that shit and be broke as fuck and then still have to pay for your steroid cycle, your food, your travel, your this, your that. We all know what we're getting into, guys. So just be healthy, be safe. But guys, bodybuilding need not go anywhere. If you don't feel it's worth taking the risk, don't take the risk. But, you know, we don't need to live life for other people. All right? Same reason I don't want someone telling me to wear a mask to protect myself. I'll worry about me. You worry about you. Okay? Just be aware of the risk. And if you do something, you should probably read up on the risk, right? Like if I'm consuming something, I should have enough personal responsibility to be able to say, huh, that's a fucking bad idea. Ha! Huh, that's a fucking good idea. We're not all stupid. <laughs> you need to read up what you're doing. Look at the risks. Look at the potential rewards and go on that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, click on the notification bell. I'm Mark Lobiner. That's not a game. Look, bro, Ambrosia's Kinetic is back in stock. This is the only mushroom pre-workout on the market, and literally, this is all you need. Don't need it. I just get mushrooms from the grocery store. The type of mushrooms that I'm talking about, you can't buy in the grocery store. You need a shaman. Nah, but seriously, though, reishi, cordyceps, lion's mane, they do so many things, antioxidants, not to mention the raw power that you're gonna get from the creatine. You're not gonna get this with that. <laughs> I don't eat creatine. I just eat steak. So you'll need a few pounds of steak for the amount of creatine that we put in here. It's all right, bro. I like steak. Listen, man, the type of focus that you get from the ginseng, the neurofactor, the coffee bean, you're not getting that without kinetic. I get all the energy I need from coffee. That's not enough caffeine. You're not gonna get the same energy. For energy, I get white powder right here. You've lost your mind, but I still love you. Let's go train. I don't care what you're saying, but taking kinetic, this is all we need. Let's get out of here.